Good evening and salutations my GH fans. Let's start off with my favorite scene in this episode. And that is the Carly scene. Carly walked in that room like she owned the place. Okay, she literally walked in there like she just she just owned that whole room. And every single time that she was sitting there checking Cyrus uh, it was a great, it was a great moment. The look on his face every time she kept checking him was just priceless. But, um, cause you know, Cyrus is pretty much acting like, oh, well, you know, she, she can't be in here. Like she's, she's an outsider. She, she you know, she, she doesn't belong there. Carly, Carly can bluff her ass off. Okay. Um, I know a lot of people. I know a lot of people have problems, issues with Carly, of all the stuff that she's done in the past, reasons why they don't like her, and they're all pretty valid. But even the most, even the people that really do not like that hate her the most, gotta give her credit where credit's due. There's a part in there where Cyrus um, hears about a shipment that gets destroyed, and this man. Looked like he was about to just go into a full-blown temper tantrum mode. Okay. <laughs> he literally seemed like he was about to lose it. He was like, what is going on? You you destroyed my ship. And like, he just went off. Carl was like, yeah, see, this is exactly what happens when, when you play games with me. I told you about that. So, don't do it again. You know, because, I mean, you know, things do happen. <laughs> Woo, that was, it was great. It was great. I mean, she came in there. She got the respect of everyone in there. Towards the end of that meeting, everyone walked up practically to her. It was like, you know, welcome to the table. You know, welcome to the table. Um, and of course, you know, Cyrus was like, well, you know, you, you, you did good today. But, uh, you know, let's see, let's see how you handle it throughout the rest of the week or whatever, you know. He says some stuff and he just kind of walked up. Now, halfway through this meeting, when Cyrus is sitting there being like, hey, you know, I don't think she's fit to run this hotel and stuff like that. You can see the look on Brando's face and the look of relief when Carly pretty much kind of won over everyone in the room. So, um, and she handled that. She handled it like a boss. And I loved it. Um, yep. Cyrus had a bad day, and it was all thanks to Carly. Great stuff, great stuff. Um, now, of course, Dante is not there looking for Jason. You know, he's on his, like, his one case or whatever, which hopefully it turns into more, because I, I, I think I already, like, kind of went over the fact that I feel that Dante needs something to do, like a hobby or, I don't know, a job or something. Um... So, you know, he comes over to Jocelyn, and he comes over to Jackson, and Jocelyn, questioning where Carly is. And, of course, they don't know. And, to be honest, and granted, if they did know, they probably wouldn't say anything. But they genuinely didn't know. They were like, yo, listen, we talked to her, and we were coming back, and we haven't heard from her since. Um, so, the next place he went to was the warehouse. Um, he told Carly that he had an informant or whatever. So, at this point... You know, Carly, Carly probably needs to sit there and kind of look into that. Just, you know, people just blabbing their mouths and all that good stuff. Um, but pretty much, you know, Dante was like, listen, have you heard from Jason? Do you know where he's at? At this point, Carly was like, yeah. Yeah, you're a cop now. Okay. Uh, lawyer. Lawyer. Just lawyer. And I was not there thinking about this yesterday. Or maybe the day before. I can't remember which one. But this was a part where Jordan was sent to asking Jason questions. And Jason was like, I have nothing to say without my attorney. And I was sent there thinking, you know, this channel ever really gets like really big. And I start trying to sell merch or whatever. I was sent there thinking like, that's the type of shirt that I want to sit there and, and have. You know, a GH shirt. They'll sit there and say, you know, not without my attorney presence. Or, or something, you know, one of those lines that Jason usually says. Um, I think that'd be great. And I think my question is, would you buy that shirt? Would you buy the GH shirt, the Jason shirt that says, um, I'm not answering any questions on my lawyer or, you know, the usual thing that he says, because I think that would be great. 
But yeah, Carly's not talking. She pretty much is like, yo, I have, I have nothing for you without my lawyer. So, dead in on that. Now, let's get to this other scene. Um, and that's the Cam, Liz, and Cam, Liz, Scott, Jordan scene. I think I named everyone. Um, so, Jordan starts to interrogate Cam. And, you know, Cam is like, listen, I didn't do it. You know, like, I didn't, I didn't, you know, I didn't shoot anyone or anything like that. Now, Jordan, I cannot actually believe I didn't drink anything over here. You know, Jordan's pretty much like, you know, do you remember what happened? Like, you know, walk me through the steps or whatever. And Cam says something along the lines of, you know, he didn't remember a certain part. And that's when, you know, Jordan's like, well, listen, if you didn't remember that, and how do you know if you remember it if he shot, you know, like, how do you remember if, you know, you shot Jason or not? At this point, Sky's like, yo, listen, let's just kind of just shut this down because, you know, he felt like Cameron was going to sit there and incriminate himself. So they shut down the interview. At some point, Liz is sitting there talking to um, Jordan. Now, in the beginning, when Liz is sitting there, you know, um, with Cam, you know, she was sitting there asking, like, yo, can you get these cops off or whatever? And they did that. Now, granted, they didn't actually have to do that. Um, and even towards the end when, you know, Jordan was like, you know, do you, like, know anything? Like, what's going on with Cam? You know, I know he's a good kid and everything. But I felt like Liz was coming at Jordan kind of hard. And I kind of looked at it. I was like, Liz, you should probably be a little more grateful because, like, she's not going as hard as she could go on camera. You know, if this was if this was anyone else, if this was not Jordan that didn't know Cam for a very long time, she probably would have went really hard on him. Um, so the fact that she was going easy, it was like Liz. You, I, I get it, you're a frantic mother and everything like that, but you need to kind of just calm down a little bit because she can go. She can be going a lot more harder on your son if she wanted to. Um, there was a couple of times when, you know, Cam had to sit there and go to get, you know, like, ballistic tests and stuff like that, like, um, gun residue on him, and, you know, it was like, yo, you don't need the cuffs or anything like that, you're gonna be good, so, she didn't have to do any of that stuff, so I was like, Liz, you might wanna just kinda, just kinda bring it down a notch, so, long story short, you know, um, they determined that the bullet that shot Jason came from behind. Cameron and at first I'm not gonna lie I, I was like whoa, whoa, whoa are, they, are they rewriting history so I went back and I, I I restored a clip again and and yeah like all you see is Cam pointing the gun at Jason but you don't see um Cam pulling the trigger so um well, I guess I was wrong it still remains to be proven, but I, I feel like I was wrong on that one. I called him a dick and everything. Alright, he's still kind of a dick, but not for that. Um. Anyway, Jordan's like, you know, listen, we're going to go over the footage or whatever, make sure everything is good. And if, you know, everything works out, then, you know, you can leave. So, um, which is good. And he also, you know, I was also sitting there thinking, like, yo... He's already on probation, but apparently, I guess, the, the time would have expired, so it wouldn't have messed him up or whatever, except for if he actually did shoot Jason, then that would have been a whole other different thing. But, um, yeah, looks like Cam's in the clear, so, okay. Only thing that really happens between Britt and Jason is that Jason's not there worried about Carly, you know, even though Briss like, listen, when she left the room, she looked like she can handle herself. And Jason was like, well, she knows how to bluff. And <laughs> you watched that scene, that whole Carly and Cyrus scene or whatever. She is bluffing her ass off. And she's doing it with a straight face like, yep, I can run this whole territory. I'm good. The minute that meeting was over and everyone left. <laughs> she had to sit there and, and like remember how to breathe again because it was a lot. So I, I give Carly a hell of props or whatever on that. But um, yeah, he was just pretty much worried about, you know, Jay, uh, worried about Carly. 
And he also kind of realized that it probably wouldn't have been a good idea for him to go to the meeting anyway. Seeing how he's shy, he's looking kind of weak, you know. So he kind of realized, like, yo, listen, it was probably better for her to go and me to just kind of just be, you know, in the wind. Um, other than that, nothing else really happened except for Britt said thank you. They heard a knock on the door and, you know, Jason kind of took her down for, like, cover or whatever. But as we all know, if you saw in the previews, it was Spinelli, you know, coming to see Jason. So hopefully they have that blood and, um, you know, his body won't go into shock again. The Jax and Jocelyn scenes, I felt like it was somewhat kind of useless. I mean, here's the thing. They get in the house and at first they're worried about Carly. And then Jax is like, all right, so what's going on with you? Tell me about the boot or whatever. And she doesn't really kind of get into it too much. Like, he kind of suspects that, like, the Buddha's on there because, you know, she's kind of worried about, like, being waitlisted and everything like that. But they they never really kind of dive into the conversation. It's like, they start the conversation about Jocelyn and what she was going through. Then they stop because Dante came in. So, at that point, when Dante left, you know, it was pretty much about Jax and there kind of being upset that, you know, Carly may be implicated in, you know, the whole Jason and Britt thing and worried about Jocelyn and stuff like that. And that was pretty much about it. That was really about it. And honestly, to tell you the truth, I felt like, I felt like I was just kind of watching. Because he's always worried about Jocelyn and Carly being too much into the business and stuff like that. So I felt like I was kind of just... I kind of felt like I've seen that whole scene play out before. So, yeah, it really was not that important, to be honest. And another scene. Um, that is the Sonny and Nina scene. The only thing that really happens is that Nina isn't there thinking about renting an apartment because she's going to be staying in Nixon Falls a little bit longer to get close to Sonny and, um, you know, keep Sonny away from his kids and Carly because... Uh, you know, there's a whole thing that's going on with that. Um, Elijah comes in. There's a bit of tension. Elijah offers to take, you know, Nina out for dinner. And she doesn't say no, but she doesn't say yes either. So Elijah leaves. Sonny kind of starts to confess his feelings towards her by saying that he was jealous of, you know, Elijah, you know, being with Nina and... You know, Nina, Nina kind of like stops it a little bit, but you know, she's like, no, no, we're good or whatever. At some point she's like, Nina, she's just like, well, what am I doing? I was like, sweetheart, you know exactly what you're doing. You know exactly what you're doing. You're keeping him away from his family. There's a part in there when Sonny Smith, they're giving Nina compliments, talking about she's beautiful. And I'm like, mm, I don't know about that, but okay, keep going. And then there was one part where Sonny's like, yeah, and she's. One second. It's like a giant cloud just came over and just got really dark really fast. Or maybe I was just kind of just into the whole thing. Um, but yeah, there's one part where Sonny is like, you know, and you're honest. And Nina just has that look and I'm like, <clears throat> really? Seriously? <laughs> and it's just, I'm sitting there thinking about this, paying all these compliments to her. And she's feeling like slightly guilty, but she keeps doing it. So it's like, all right. So basically, you're just saying is that you sort of have a conscience, but you're just going to choose to ignore it because um, whatever stupid reasons that you're like coming up with. Oh, and then Sonny sees um, Elijah out there with that guy um, doing shady stuff or whatever. Also, towards the end of the episode, Cam finds out that Peter was the one that killed Franco um, when Scott and Liz are sitting there talking. And Liz is like, you know, I think we should sit there and tell, you know, Cameron because, you know, he can, you know, direct his energy, you know, his anger and everything like that away from Jason. And I'm like, how is that actually helping? So you're going to you're going to direct his anger from Jason. Who's actually the nice one. And what? Put it on Peter? The guy who's killed countless amount of people? That's the good I... Liz, I just... Uh, uh. 
Anyway, um, doesn't really matter because Cam over here is it anyway, so, um, yeah, there's that. And I think that's about it. I feel like I missed a little bit, but I don't feel like I missed that much. I felt like it was more of a contained episode. And I think the reason of that is because Carly, I think, might actually have the most scenes in this episode. I think. I think a large part of this was with Carly. Or maybe... That was just the part I was just most interested about besides Jason. Um, anyway, with that being said, um, yeah, another great episode. Um, I gotta sit there and say, I'm like, wow, you, you know, GH, J started killing it this month. Um, now I'm about to sit there and review Days, and I'm like, Days, yeah, look, look what GH is doing. We gotta follow suit. Um, let's, let's keep that same energy going. Um, so yes, with that being said, I'm going to go. I want to thank everyone for watching. Be safe, everyone. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. You know, you know, let's try this again. You know, I always love that they're reading the comments and stuff like that. So, um, definitely write your comments down below. And, um, yes. See you in the next video. And I'm not even redoing it over again. I'm just, I'm just not doing it. But, um. Yes, thank you for watching. Be safe. I'll catch you in the next video.